Welcome everyone. I will start my uh, talk now. And since we had a good break, and if I find my mouse, yeah, I will just turn that to us off. Yeah, much better. All right. So I already uh, highlighted the agenda. There will be some front end coding. And I am Gabor Chomak. I started my handle to be like donkey coder. So I'm on Twitter, Facebook, and Medium. Uh, I didn't post too much so far, only on Medium, but feel free to follow me. Uh, I love playing ice hockey, and I'm a senior games developer at Gamesys Group, uh, where we make on online games. If any of you aren't familiar with it, uh, we are uh, FTSE registered PLC, uh, operating from New Jersey to UK and Spain. So some of you might know some of our sites. So what we do is we make games. And our games are different, but also a bit similar to each other. And that gets us some challenges. And yes. so. How to annoy a designer? Uh, anyone has any idea? OK, some of you are nodding. Uh, I, I got a popular example here. So Apple made some mistake on iOS 7. Anyone can spot it? OK, uh, let me help you. This is the perfect version. So if I toggle a bit between the slides, you can see that they didn't position the one on the calendar correctly. And I don't know whose fault that was, but it enraged some, well, not necessarily users, but the uh, news online sites were raging about it. So you shouldn't be you know, allowing this to happen. And if you're a designer, you design something, you don't want the developer to put it one pixel to the right, because it will look off. In this case, it might be that it's just an opti optical illusion. Uh, but the point is that you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't uh, diverge from the design, because one pixel can make terrible differences. So how often is that a problem? Well, it depends. It, it depends on how much quality you want. So as Apple, you obviously want every, everything to be perfect. Uh, Facebook spent, I think, like a thousand man hours redesigning the like button recently because, you know, it's, it sounds a lot for just one simple image, but it's seen by billions every day. So uh, we, we are uh, re really caring for quality. So this is one of our recent games. And again, this is not an advertisement. It's just uh, what I work on. So. Uh, you know, gamble responsibly and everything. Um, so every, everything is detailed, and we want to give perfect control for designers. Uh, they also wanted to have uh, to be able to de design in 4K, like you know, scale eight for 4K display. We thought that's a bit over the edge, uh, especially if we consider like texture download sizes and stuff. But we we are. Uh, as we, we have good balance between quality and performance. Um, and we built up a system where the first iteration of a design is ready within an, a few hours. And then the designers can go on polishing it for weeks, literally sprints, without us touching it. So the designers will fiddle on it, it gets back to the QAs, and it's, it's a really healthy flow. And the good thing is that you don't get to waste senior developer hours uh, moving something one pixel here and there. So yeah, uh, so about a little bit about our journey. Uh, 2010 was so long ago, a decade ago. It, a decade doesn't seem so much, but what we had was iPhone 4 and we had Flash and as history tells us, those two collided big time. Uh, so we had this, this Flash uh, UI, which was really convenient for our designers. 
they could design animations and everything uh, in their single page and we could make that work with the code. So I know this is not optimal, but I couldn't get a better screenshot and, uh, but it's like a Photoshop based layout. Uh, there's a timeline if you want to make animations and here like all the bingo balls are 88 and with code we change it to, to be perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, so Flash was very good. Uh, in fact, even the AAA games like GTA and stuff used it to develop their menu for the games uh, because, you know, they, they could compile it to C++ and the 2D parts were actually easier to design and, and make it work nicely. So I think Flash was really good in, in lots of cases, but uh, we knew that iPhone, iPhone 4 came and, or, and even more, so we, ne we needed to make it work on iPhones. Uh, so we started working on it. And the time we started working on it was around this 2011, let's say. Uh, iPhone 4 was the most popular device, but even 3GS had ser serious advantage. Uh, which was iOS 6, and that, uh, at that time uh, Safari was very limited, so all of our games are, are browser-based, and uh, I think, yeah, we, we didn't have as many tools as we have now, and sometimes what worked on desktop, it didn't work on Safari, uh, because they were on their own route. Uh, yes? Uh, oops. Okay. So, sorry, spoiler. Uh, so, how should we collaborate with designers? Okay, uh, yes. So, this is not the way, obviously. And he's not a, he is not a designer, he's a QA, it was a different discussion. <laughs> anyway, so how we should collaborate with QAs is, like, if you go and Google it, every site will tell you Agile and Sprint and this uh, spiraling, and it's basically working together. And we wanted to get there, and we, we didn't want to fiddle with pixels because that was tiring for us. So we came up with a solution that we give a JSON file for them. And some of the architects had this crazy idea to teach designers how to use Git. And it was really crazy, uh, but we, we went through with it. They learned it, and from now, uh, like five years went into this project. I can tell you it works brilliantly. So highly recommended. They learned, we learned, and it's, it's happier. Uh, especially if you, if you consider like, uh, we, we gave a way, uh, option for them to uh, implement uh, animations with spines. Uh, yes, I th do, do, do you know what spines are? All right, let, I, I was prepared for that. So let me show the, my pixie dragon, if I can, yep. Okay, so this is a spine animation. So it, it's kind of similar to the bones animation and it, it does everything, but in, uh, in 2D. So it's really lightweight, it just loads one image, texture packed, and it will put together uh, with Web, WebGL rendering, and it has co canvas fallback, so if you're running on Internet Explorer, it won't be performant anyway, but still, it will at least look somehow. So yeah, so we did this uh, crazy experiment, and uh, we, we asked the designers like if they want any tooling, but the conclusion was that it's better if they interact with it directly because tooling needs support, it can break, new features needs, like it's, it's a hideous circle, one, one more thing to develop. So we, we, we went down this route and this is, this is actually nearly a snippet for, from my production code. Uh, and in the end we can uh, package it nicely, minify the JSON, you know, JSON all, all already has uh, the speedy uh, server-side optimizations. So yeah, and the fact that I'm not lying, this is one of our recent game, 
and you can see clearly the two branches, one for the developers, one for the designers. We can actually work in synchronous uh, quite nice. So now I'll get a chair because I'm going to show you how it will work. If you're interested. All right, so let me just try to go into one monitor mode. All right, no, not Spotify, sorry about that. Uh, bad habits and I will need some of my cheat sheet here ta, ta, ta. and all right perfect and let me just increase it for you how is this all right hopefully I won't do any mistakes here uh, I've spent one, one week here in the Canarias, so I completely forgot how to code. Okay, so what we, what we have here, uh, I'm using the Pixie engine, uh, the same as Drew the Dragon before, so it does WebGL with Canvas fallback, and it's, it's really amazing. It's basically, yeah, so it, it draws into a Canvas tag of an application. So the create app, it just accepts width, height, background color for any reason, and I'm appending that uh, to the stage. So if I'm running it, hopefully it will run. Uh, and I have the pixie inspector hook. I'll show you in a minute why that's good. and it's still compiling. We have the index TypeScript, which is just call, calls the application manager. Git ignore usual, package JSON, it's just minimal TypeScripting plus the Pixie.js engine, uh, TypeScript config, and Webpack config for uh, loading the resources because we will need some JPEGs to be served. And yes, and just a new homepage for Tenerife. Uh, and hopefully, is it running now? Yes, soon it will be running. All right, okay, so it's running. And as I promised, uh, here is the Pixie Inspector, and it's really good because you can debug the Canvas applications. So you can like, yeah, at the moment we don't have anything on the stage, but once we have, ha we will have, it's a very useful thing to do. And if I go into the elements, you can see that there's, this whole thing is just a Canvas. Yes? Oh, yes, I have no idea how you do it in oh, command. All right, great, thank you. Okay, so canvas tag, and we have this Pixie plugin, which, which you will see later. And also it has some, yeah, it just outputs to the console and you can use dot Pixie and I can set the alpha to 0.2 if I want to, but because it's, it has nothing on it. Uh, anyway, so let's start. So first, uh, I'm gonna add my bunny. So this is a sprite from bunny.png. And then I'm just gonna add it to the stage and let's see where we are. So now we have a bunny, a cute little bunny. In fact, it's too little, so uh, let me just zoom in. How is this? All right, so now we have a bunny, uh, but we want to add it from uh, something else. Um, so I mentioned JSON before. 
part. So let me put this into the resources. I'm going to call it magic.json because why not? And so this is like the root entry. Then I'm going to add some childs to the stage, which will be an array. And if, 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 so let's give that thing a name. Uh, bunny one and we can give that a, a type so le let it be a sprite and yes and the texture URL will be needed and that's bunny.png all right and why is this complaining no it's not all right so if I want to add it to the stage, uh, then I will need to actually fetch my uh, magic, hopefully it will work, magic.json. Uh, yeah, then uh, that will be response to response.json and then it will be a JSON body and we will turn it into something later on but uh, let me just see if it works uh, sorry uh, that was not intentional all right so we have our console log here surprisingly uh, well, it, I'm gonna minify just a teeny bit. How is this now? Is it better? Oh, right. Uh, let me just re reorganize it a teeny bit. All right, so. Okay, so let's stop here and let's see my body here. Um, where is my, yeah, yeah, okay, so the body has the childs, so I need body the childs, let's do the first child for now, and um, yes, so switch, actually, let me just add it to the variable, like current, uh, so the first child, if current dot type uh, equals sprite, was it? Then we need to basically do this, which is if we have a bu uh, yeah we don't let's call it sprite, and that will be the current dot, uh, which was this texture URL, uh, add, add, add child to the stage, uh, and then, yes, hopefully this will work nicely, if I'm not in breakpoint, yes, so it still works. Uh, now, let's do some positioning. Uh, so we will need x, let's move it to 5 and 5. All right, so pride.position equals current.position. All right, let's see what we got. And it moved. I don't know if that's visible enough. And I'm a nasty designer who wants to move the rabbit, so I'm going to move it more to you. All right, so it's moving nicely. It's following the JSON, uh, JSON pattern. So let's, let's make something more trickier. Uh, and so in my JSON, I want this sprite to actually rotate. Actually, I want more bunnies. Who, who doesn't love more bunnies? So let, let's implement that real quick. I want a second body uh, bunny. Everything stays the same. 
and all we need is a for loop all right in index in body dot childs yes and that was called current and hopefully if i put it inside we will now have two bunnies yes so now we have two bunnies so now a designer can go in and add as many bunnies as they want which is quite nice but you know still limited uh, we want to achieve more but this is all just the fact so it seems like low level it's just to po show the fact that in five minutes we already achieved this so imagine like we we developed the engine for half a year and then continuously improved it so we're at a really good stage now uh, but let's let's continue um, okay so let let's say i want to rotate this body uh body uh, sorry bunny uh, so i'm gonna say i want events that will trigger on tick which is uh, like a, a game loop event if you if you are familiar with that term uh, so let's say add rotation and 0 0.5 so and obviously the one bunny has it the other doesn't so this should have null checks and everything uh, we will get there um, so if uh, right uh, if if the current data has uh, which how did I call it on tick then uh, I'm gonna cheat a little bit okay so we have app manager app uh, dot ticker so this is again pixie just has it as default so on uh, the delta is the time since the renders so I think it's milliseconds uh yes so on tick if the current uh has on, on tick dot add rotation yeah i'm gonna correct it uh then the sprite dot rotation plus equals the value of it all right and it rotates quite nicely I don't know if you see it but it's sure that the designer didn't mean this all right so what what, what we need uh, to fix that uh, anyone knows anyone wants to interact more sprites, more sprites. yes uh, we will get there but uh, we we will fix it with anchors so the anchor is like the center point of the rotation so i'm gonna just copy this and i will center it and in the code i will instead of using this uh, sprite dot position i would end up having 30 different uh, you know uh, e e equal in, uh, equalizations for for having all these variables so I'm gonna do this trick which is all right so for uh, key in element which is basically iterate through all the keys in the in the J JSON object uh, the sprite and sprites key should equal the oh not the element um, where was it current the current uh, current variables key and uh, I will need to have the sprite as any because we are on we are in TypeScript uh, of course you can do, do it type safe but this is just a demo so if I refresh you now can see that it spins a bit more correctly but it's not visible so let me just 
uh, move that back to the to to somewhere where everyone can see it and refresh all right so now the bunny is rotating nice uh, but it feels like it rotates too fast so i can slow it down and there you go so we we can add the interaction we uh, yes So the designers update pretty much anything they, they can because, you know, the more freedom you give them, the more free, are, free they are to implement better designs. So they are usually changing images because, like, we have a basic game and, uh, like, if, if we want to reskin the game or change the designs, they will change the images. Uh, they will change the buttons. They will change the fonts, the font sizes. Uh, sometimes, like even for localization, because you, you can do the same with localization. I mean, most companies already do, uh, but uh, it's the same principle. Uh, the guy who is in charge for the localization can go in and edit the, uh, the given language. And uh, even the audio engineer who does the sound edits, he can change this, the sounds and he can uh, replace anything he wants. He can work together with the animators because we have that complex spine animation. Like imagine we do that dragon and then the uh, sound guy can work together with them to have the proper dragon breathing and fire sounds. And uh, in the end it will come together in, in a very good com complex. So usually in, in our games there's a few designers involved, QA, uh, developers not so much nowadays but this this will allow even more so if you're ux you want to try something like would would that button look better on on the other side you don't need to do prototype you just fork off, fork off from the, this repository and then and it also has other advantage like you can you can actually separate the view from the model in the clearest way possible. There's, there's no bigger separation than this. Because if you have it like C-sharp, like they are in a, in a file nearby, but they interact heavily with the code. And this is more, more of a one-way path to, to interact with design. So I found that, uh, in, in the last few years that there are lots of advantages on having it this way. Um, and there's hardly any cost. I mean, so far, yeah, we, we could done this in code the same time, but it gives us so much more freedom. And the, the performance penalty is not big. It, even like, because we have a separate JSON file, uh, we can get to the first meaningful paint faster. We can load the JavaScript code part faster, faster and then the layouts later on when we actually need them. And you can do lots, lots of optimizations. So I think it's good. Uh, but you know, if you try it, you don't like it. I'm, I'm not offended. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it might not work in every case. But for me, this sounds, this seems quite cool. Any other questions? Oh, I was mean, wasn't I? <laughs> now feel free to ask questions, please. Uh, not only game specific, but in the end, every every component has their own JSON file, and we bundle them together on compile time. Do they have different uh, syntax or properties? Um, some some components do, uh, but it's rather that you you specify the type in the design. Like I, I'll show you the mediator part later on, but. In the JSON, you will specify like, I want to display a date, and then it will uh, receive an input from the actual code. So uh, there, I, we, we use the mediator pattern quite often. And how that works is that the mediator knows of the view and of the, everything in the model. So the mediator can supply the view with what it needs. Any other question? All right, 
So, okay, let's dig into the mediators uh, in a few seconds, but to have something displayed, we don't just need bunnies, but we need to have a font, actually. So let me get two seconds here. All right. So let's say this is some kind of text and we don't need texture URL anymore, but we need an actual text like hello world as usual. Uh, position can work the same way. And let me, yeah, it's getting cramped in, in such zoomed in uh, view, but let me try fixing it. So if we have tech, no. Nah. All right, that's new. If we have text, and uh, then we need to do a new text. So, all right, uh, new pixie text. And the text itself will be the current dot text value. And we want to do this the same way, except it's text. And then we want to add it to the stage as well. Uh, this, I, I will reformat it in, in a bit because this is ugly, but all right. So we have texts as well. So let's say we want this to be something else than hello world. So I will uh, link a mediator. So you can do it like full path, like com.yourcompany.whatever. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna go simple, like uh, text mediator. And, and then for that, we need a basic mediator class. Mediator.typescript. So class mediator. Um, yes, so it, it will need a view, which is for now any type, but it can be, you know, type safe. Uh, later on, and it will need an init function, which should be override, overridden. Yes, and so, and we need the actual text mediator. So let's say text mediator, and then text mediator extends mediator and it will have the view we need the init function to be overridden and let's say this dot view as pixie dot text dot text to be equal like whatever it doesn't matter you ca you can get this from the model or you can set a timeout here or whatever uh, and then uh, what I need is if uh, current dot mediator. Uh, well, it, it can be a switch. So if the mediator for a text is matches. So case text mediator, then I will need a new text mediator and set the view uh, to be this text and for, and yes, and then call the init function. And then if I refresh, 
Uh, yeah, it cannot find the name. Oh, I have to manually import mediator, is it? No, not here, but here. Why didn't it import it? No. Export. All right, now it imports it. Uh, view, view, view. Does not. Yes. All right, so I will need to export this as well. You see, one, one week of the one week at the beach completely lost my mind. Uh, yes. All right, now I get syntax highlighting as well. All right, so now it's whatever. And then from now, now you, the view is hooked up with the TypeScript. You can do anything you want. And that's what we usually do. Um, OK, so I showed you the text part, uh, the positioning, rotate, anchor, uh, bunnies, font style. Yes, so now, now the designer can go in and change the font uh, to uh, font style. How, why this is work is Pixie.js provides me all these things, uh, which is easy for now. But if, if you don't know how anything works, you can go to the Pixie.js's documentation. Or what I will do is just cheat a bit, uh, which is, yes, oh, so it's not font style, it's just style. And what I need is a field to be white and font family to be, let's say, Arial. And I can also do drop shadow true. So if I do this, you see, everything just works. And it wasn't too much coding. Uh, so it will allow you with endless possibilities. And yes, you can move this, move everything to a factory and properly organize it from, you know, clean code and not just drop everything into, into one, one class. And if you do uh, put the, uh, like put this part into into a different function, then you can have recursion and have children of children, which is, in, in the end, it will produce something like this. I'm going to show you our games because maybe you will believe me that uh, if we have something like this, uh, let me show you something actually I wrote. Also some Spanish, <laughs> because we are here. So. In the, in the, yeah, I'm, I'm disabling cache, that's why it's super slow now. Uh, but you can see we have lots of components, lots of animations, lots of sp shiny things. And for us, it's, it's very, very relieving that uh, we can tell the designers, you do whatever you do. And then if a QA comes to me like, Okay, the Siguente, you, Huego, uh, my Spanish is not good at all. So the Q, QA came and the, uh, comes to me and he says like, this, this, sh there's a typo in the Spanish text. I have no idea. But then he can go in and fix it uh, on GitHub and we just accept the pull request and we don't have to deal with it. So our QA started using this tool and they started fixing their own, own, own bugs. Like they find it, they, they fix it, we press a button and it's so seamless. Yeah, and some people already won. Uh, and it works on portrait mode as well and phone as well. So if I emulate phone, we get some, some different layouts, but a lot of things reused. Uh, which is super cool. So you can see like, for example, the ball history, which is uh, this thing, it would come up here. Um, maybe, yeah, it shows on my screen, it's just super small here. Uh, but yeah, so that was uh, my point about this. And let me, yes, so if you're interested in Pixie, 
It's a really good tool. You can, it's pixiejs.io. I love working with it. Uh, it runs 60 FPS. We never had performance issues with it if we used it correctly. Of course, if the designer goes in and implements 100 million drop shadows on that 100 texts, it will st uh, struggle. So we have to keep a close eye on them. Uh, but let's get back to the presentation. Yes, so all this, I put, up, put it up to GitHub, so you don't have to write all this half an hour code from scratch. And it, it might happen that it got a bit better. I did some refactoring on it as well. So it's a bit nicer code-wise than what, what I showed you now, but you know, uh, that wasn't fully the point. So yeah, uh, there was a question. Uh, you spoiled it, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so what do they change? They usually change font references. So we actually ended up like uh, putting it out so they can find like, okay, I want to change the ball number. So they won't have to uh, go into the, to the component and everything. They often change the tint. So we came up with a tint map. So if they are thinking, okay, I want to change the background color, uh, they don't have to go through everything. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. So this is the Pixie Inspector for the actual game. Okay, I will just show this. So you can go out here. Uh, you can even change the pos positionings from here. And this provides the designers a very easy tool. So they just fiddle around with it. It will actually be visible here. We even have, yeah, it, it's not showing, but there's a blue line pointing that I moved it out of the screen. Uh, so yeah, the designers can uh, utilize it and have a very fast workflow. They are still slow, but it's because they are fiddling with the pixels for weeks and, you know, calling around the others like, oh, what do you think? How would it look better? Uh, but this is like, we, we put so much emphasis in quality and this gives us a competitive advantage, honestly. Uh, okay, so this was one of the challenges. Uh, when one of the designers didn't understand what clean code was, he went in and said the black is actually red or whatever. Yeah, it's red. Uh, and then introduced another black because he needed black as well. So we needed to start, uh, you know, teaching them on how to make reusable code even from this JSON. And that was a big learning. Also, if we have merge conflicts, uh, designers will freak out. So then our se senior uh, help is needed or sometimes even the junior can solve it. But uh, merge conflicts, it's really scary for the designers. Uh, they of course use source tree or tower or anything like which has a graphical UI for Git. Uh, but it's, it's true that the more we teach them, the more rewarding it is because they, they end up you know, understanding what's happening under the hood. Uh, also, there's one challenge to reuse the design. So uh, what would you call these images here, like round oval rectangles? So we, we went up calling it sausages because our, our PO is obsessed with them. Uh, but the designers ended up calling them pills because for them it looks like pills. So we, we ended up having a design dictionary so we know what each other are talking about. And we ended up making it reusable uh, because like here, uh, they occur the same in, in within the same game, so they need to reuse. But sometimes within the same game, you, ne you need two different patterns, like these two are from the same game. So we in introduce, uh, introduced like types and shortcuts for it. So again, like no spaghetti code, even in these JSONs, try to reuse as much as possible. Uh, yes, we are responsive. I showed you previously in the in the images, and yes, uh, yeah, reusability. We went with submodules. Uh, okay, so one rightful question you should have in mind is that why not? Why didn't we go with CSS? Uh, Adobe Illustrator, even back in 2010. Uh, provided us with, uh, it had a CSS box. So if in the Illustrator file you clicked somewhere, it output a CSS file, which is gross. No one would maintain it. Uh, and we still need to support Internet Explorer. 
uh, 11, uh, because even though it's like half a percent, but we are a gambling business, every user gives us money. So, you know, losing half a percent of money, there's no business that's going to take it. Uh, so CSS didn't work at the time. And how to apply for HTML. I actually have some thought on it and some plans. So be sure to follow me on Donkey Coder because I hope within half a year I will have something to show for. But basically with the same principle, if you, like the same as, web, as Rust, if you only allow some stuff to be uh, doable, then it can be cross-platform without the ugliness of CSS. Uh, and how do we work? So we, I, I call this the responsibility spectrum, which is the designers, can, uh, the designers actually got split into two groups. Uh, one of them, the designers, they work on the core concept and they just provide nice Photoshop files and how, how the butterflies will look and you know they, they try to uh, have the feeling of the game. And then the art workers will actually put it into live, uh, life. And sometimes the devs, if there's a new component or new feature, and then the QAs will test it and then we will have a live product. Uh, I talked about like we have lots of build time improvements. Uh, we take 3G and mobile phone uses really seriously. So a lot of time went into optimizing that. The benefits uh, I talked about uh, mostly, but basically senior developers can spend time on more useful things. And uh, yes, and uh, like real, real like uh, final like uh, ideas can be showcased. So prototyping is way easier. Um, and that was my talk. Uh, my company sponsored my travel here. So we are hiring across the world. Uh, we are somewhat open to remote as well. So if you are interested in switching a job, be sure to drop me a line. And thank you for your uh, for your time and listening to me. And if you have any questions, I'll, uh, I'll stick around and be here tomorrow as well, or shoot for it now. Thank you. Any questions? Well, rather like a, a, a designer who is more focused on uh, exporting the actual correct assets. So the designer just makes a scale eight version and the art worker ma will make sure that it looks good on every scale, that it will work with edge cases, that it will work with real life scenarios, uh, and he will do the actual fiddling with the JSON. So yeah, there's some designers who don't like that. Well, it it depends. Yeah, you, usually it is. Sometimes the UX, sometimes uh, the developers. If we if if we want to implement the feature before the designers, we just do a mock design and then they they will fine tune it. Yes. Yes. And even we can work on it at the same time, and then we have to deal with merge conflicts. But if we want to, you know, test out something, the designer will design it meanwhile, and in the end, we just merge the merge them together, and it will work fine. Yes. Um, yeah, you were talking a bit about reusability. Uh, for example, colors is a, is a great uh, example, I guess. Um, are they used for each component? Uh, defined for each component separately? Or are they like on a per game? Uh, uh, wise, uh, yes, so that part, uh, that's a really good question because we have, we have like 40 games live which are nearly the same as the one I showed you. So we have a basic, based library as a submodule which sets up a basic game and then from it the design can diverge. Uh, so there every shared component is design, uh, defined so if you design a game that will reuse some, like everything that's at least in two games, it's there. Any other questions? 
All right, thank you very much.